Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. The title itself says it all, but it goes even deeper than that. Shocking discovery enables rabbis to, to identify the Messiah. And we're not just talking about Malachi 3 by no means. I just happen to have it opened up to Malachi 3 as part of this broadcast. But I am really looking forward to sharing this information with you, especially if you're Jewish, especially if you're Israeli. Uh, there are so many people that this could benefit, not just them, but as well as uh, Christians as well. Ministers really need to hear this because there is a stark warning to ministers out there uh, as well when it comes to this particular broadcast. We're going to start here, though, with Malachi chapter 3. And then we're going to go into 2 Kings. We're going to be looking at Elisha. We're going to be looking at Nahum. And then we're going to identify the Messiah from the story of Nahum and Elisha itself there. So get a pen and paper handy if you need to take notes. And let's get ready. Behold, I send my messenger, and he shall clear the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant, whom you delight in, behold, he cometh, said the Lord of hosts. By the way, the very fulfillment of verse 1 in Malachi chapter 3 is not what most people think. But whom may abide in the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like a fuller's soap. He shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver. And there shall be they that shall offer unto the Lord offerings in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem, notice, and Jerusalem, be pleasant unto the Lord as in the days of old, as in an ancient years. And I will come near to you to judgment. I will be swift against the sorcerers against the adulterers, and against false swearers, against those that oppress the hireling of his wages, the widow and the fatherless that turn aside the stranger from his right, and the fear not of me, saith the Lord of hosts. For I, the Lord, change not, and ye, so, o, o sons of Jacob, are not consumed. From the days of your fathers you have turned aside from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But you say, wherein shall we return? All right, I'm going to pause there uh, because we can, we're going to get into a little bit later, even this part about the adulterers. But the most important thing right now is we're in such a late, late hour on this earth that identifying the Messiah more than ever is critical. So if you're Jewish, I strongly, I, I beg of you to listen carefully. Listen closely to what I'm about to share with you. Because in the story of Elisha and Naaman is the answer for you to be able to identify the Messiah himself. Let's take it and let's look at it. We are in 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Aram, or the king of Syria, was a great man with his master. Great, great, great leader of the Syrian army. And held an esteem because by him the Lord had given victory unto Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. And the Syrians, I'm putting Syrians instead of Armenians in there because it's easier for you to understand it, had gone out in bands and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid. And she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, Would that my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria. Then, he, then would he recover him of his leprosy. And he went in and told his Lord, saying, 
Thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go now, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed, and he took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand pieces of gold, and ten changes of raiment. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is coming to you, behold, I have sent Naaman my servant to you, that you mayest recover him of his leprosy. And it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter that he rent his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive that this man doth send unto me to recover a man of leprosy? But consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh an occasion against me. It's just like Israel today. Someone inquires because they're supposed to be the light of the world, right? But as simple of a feat of healing leprosy, well, even to this day, it's not a simple feat any longer. Neither was it then. And of course, the king so perplexed, thinking that the king of Syria was only trying to trap him. And verse 8 says, And it was so when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore has you... Rent your clothes. Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Now the king didn't get it. But when Elisha, when Elisha heard of Naaman and his case, he knew good and well that God could do anything. And he knew that whatever he would command Naaman to do, if he would obey, God would heal him of his leprosy. And then the Syrians would know that there is truly a prophet in Israel. So there was an identifying mark right there that not only would identify that there was a prophet in Israel, but it would also tell the Syrians that there was a prophet. It would tell Israel there was a prophet. And it should even identify for Israel today that if this same thing could repeat, that truly the Messiah had come. Well, I say the Messiah for a reason. Not just a prophet, but the Messiah himself. Let's continue on in looking at this to know exactly the course. So Naaman came with his horses, with his chariots, and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go wash in the Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come back to you, and you shall be clean. But Naaman was wroth, and went away and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and recover the leper. You know, people get it in their minds the way the Messiah should be. I say that to all of Israel. I say this to the Jewish people around the world. You have already prefixed in your mind exactly what the Messiah should be and how the fulfillment of the scriptures, the many scriptures about the Mashiach should be. Watch what happens though. Verse 12. Are not Amana and Parfar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. And his servants came near and spoke unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather than would he, when he says to you, Wash and be clean? Then went he down, dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, Jordan according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came back like into the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. 
And he returned to the man of God and all his company and came and stood before him. And he said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. Now, therefore, I pray you, take a present of thy servant. Now, I want to say something to you ministers of today. And you need to pay very close heed to what I'm about to say. You need to watch closely what happens next. But he said, as the Lord liveth before who I stand, I will receive none. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. And Naaman said, if not yet, I pray thee, let there be given to thy servant two mules, burden of earth, for, there, for thy servant will henceforth offer neither burnt offering nor sacrifice unto other gods, but unto the Lord. And this thing the Lord pardon thy servant when thy master goeth into the house of Ramon to worship there, and he leaneth on my hand. And I prostrate myself in the house of Ramon, and when I prostrate, prostrate myself in the house of Ramon, the Lord pardon thy servant in this thing. And he said unto him, Go in peace. So he departed from him some way. But Gehazi, remember Gehazi was a servant of Elisha. Many great things God had done for Gehazi. The servant Elisha, the man of God, and he said, Behold, my master has spared this Naaman, the Syrian, and not receiving at his hand that which he brought. As the Lord liveth, I will surely run after him and take somewhat of him. So Gehazi followed after Naaman. And when Naaman saw one running after him, he alighted from the chariot to meet him and said, Is all well? He said, All is well. My master has sent me, saying, Behold, even now there are come to me from the hill country of Ephraim two young men of the sons of the prophets, and give them, I pray, thee a talent of silver and two changes of raiment. Flat out lie. And I want you to think about this when we think about Elisha. I want you to think about Jesus. And I want you to think about what these ministers are doing today. And Naaman said, Be content, take two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver into two bags with two changes of raiment and laid them upon two of his servants and they bore them before him. He goes back. When he came to the hill, he took them from the, their hand and deposited them in the house, and he let, let the men go, and they departed. But he went in and stood before his master, and Elisha said unto him, Hence comest thou, Gehazi. And he said, That servant went no, no, no whither. Lied to him. Lied, not only did he lie to Naaman, now he's lying to the prophet. He said unto him, went not, thy, went not my heart with you when the man turned back from his chariot to meet you? Like in a vision. Today, they say remote viewing was discovered through the writings of Daniel the prophet in a book of Daniel that we did not have that was given to the CIA in Syria many years ago. And yet, oddly enough, we know it's by vision. That's what we would call it. But very similarly, this is what Elisha is saying and doing. Is it a time to receive money and to receive garments and olive yards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and men servants and maid servants? It's not to say there's not a time for that, but he just simply, he had already told him no. That was really the issue. He told them no. Don't receive money. But, but Gehazi went and lied to Naaman and got him to, to give up some money anyway. And then comes back and lies to Elisha that, that he never went anywhere. Then Elisha says, The leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto you and into thy seed forever. And he went out from his presence, a leper as white as snow. You ministers that have made yourself fat by living off the gift of Jesus Christ 
are leprous, as white as snow. But we're not done. We now have the identifying mark that there is a prophet in Israel. By the fact that when the Syrians come, he will heal them. The leprosy comes, he will heal it. But there is another identifying mark. And that was, he would not take money for it. Let's move forward. Matthew chapter 4. And Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria. And they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases, torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy. And he healed them. And there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee and from Decapolis, and from Jerusalem and from Judea, and from beyond the Jordan, which is Syria. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10, we read this. These twelve Jesus sent forth, commanded them, saying, Go not in the way of the Gentiles, and into the city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, Freely have you received, freely give. There's that identifying mark. Not only had Jesus healed the people of Syria, but he also would not do it for money. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses, nor scrip for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staffs, for the workman is worthy of his meat. In other words, if they offer you to give you, to care for you, that would be acceptable. But he also, if you'll notice, he mentions, it's so beautiful in here, provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses, right? Nor script for your journey, neither two coats. And what was one of the prices that Naaman demanded of the Syrian? Two changes of garments. Like saying two coats. The identifying mark of the prophet in Israel, and in this case would be the Messiah. Because as we continue on in reading here, we find out over in Matthew chapter 11, right after this happens in Matthew 10, now, when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples. And we know that John was the Elisha, or the spirit of Elijah, the messenger that would prepare the way before the what? The Lord. He was the one that would be here in Malachi chapter four, 3. I send my messenger and he shall clear the way before me and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. By the way, he wasn't talking about the temple in Jerusalem. Although he did go there too. That's not where the Lord came. The Lord came to the temple that it says in the scripture, he doesn't dwell in a temple made with hands, but a body hast thou prepared. When Christ was on the Jordan River being baptized by John, the Spirit of God came down upon him like a dove. That's when the Lord came to his temple, suddenly to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant whom you delight in, behold, he cometh, saith the Lord of hosts. Mm. Ooh, Malachach Habrit. I love it. 
Let's go back over here, though. And said unto him, Are you he that should come, or do we look for another? Now he's talking about the Messiah. Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which you do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went you out in the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went you out to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. Do you see that identifying mark again? A man clothed in soft raiment? Don't forget, Gehaza acquired from Naaman the two changes of garment, the soft raiment. He was showing you John wasn't like that. John was a true prophet as well. But what when you ought to see a prophet? Yeah, I send you more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before you. And that in itself shows you that when the Lord came to his temple, it was when the one that was preparing the way, when John was baptizing him, and the Lord had already said, the one that you see the Spirit of God descending and resting upon, the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, but a body hast thou prepared for me. Verily I send you among them that are born of women, there hath not risen greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist till now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Continuing on, just as uh, from the Hebrew Matthew here about the, the silver and the gold, Chapter 10, verse 6, Go to the sheep that strayed from the house of Israel. Preach to them the kingdom of heaven will be fulfilled. Heal the sick. Restore life to the dead. Cleanse the lepers. Cast out demons from men. Do not take wages. Freely you receive. Freely you shall give. As we turn back to Malachi, though, Something I want to share with you. He shall purify the sons of Levi. Talking about the Messiah when he comes. Purge them as gold and silver. Getting down to verse 5. And I will come near to you to judgment. And I will be swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers. It wasn't just the fact that like Elisha. And Naaman, the healing of the Syrian, as Jesus healed the Syrians as well. Jesus also cleansed the lepers, like Naaman was a leper. He also would not take the money. Jesus would not take the money and instructed not to take the money. But like Gehazi, there was one of Jesus' servants, just like Elisha's servant Gehazi, that did take the money. And that was Judas Iscariot. Yes, the 30 pieces of silver. And he did it in secret, just like Gehazi did. And that curse of leprosy. Remember, Elisha said, the leprosy will be upon you and your descendants. No doubt Judas must have been a descendant of Gehazi. And it still runs rampant to this day. I will come to the judgment, swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers. Not hard to remember who the adulterers are, is it? 
Because what we do recall is in Matthew 23, serpents, seed of vipers. Let me show you that highlighted a little quick, quick image so you can see it a little bit better here for you. You behave according to the deeds of your fathers. Jesus is saying when he's talking to the Pharisees and Sadducees, starting with verse 29, Woe to you hypocrites, Pharisees, sages, because you build the tombs of the prophets and glorify the mo uh, monuments of the righteous. You say if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been permitted them to put the prophets to death. And this you bear witness against yourselves that you're the sons of those who killed the prophets. You behave according to the deeds of your fathers. Serpents, seed of vipers. How will you escape the judgment of Gehenna if you do not turn in repentance? That seed of vipers is adulterers. And it says it right there in Hebrew on the other side. Nachashim, serpents in the plural. Zarah, Sophonim. Seed of vipers. A mingled bunch, hybrid, bastard children. And where do they come from, the Pharisees? They came from the Babylonian captivity when their forefathers, who were priests as well and Levites, did not separate themselves from the peoples of the lands, doing according to their abominations, even of the Canaanites, Hittites, and Perzites, and Jebusites, right on down Ammonites, Moabites. It's funny how Netanyahu says, you know, don't forget, uh, you know, what they had done to, to you. They wanted to go off and kill everybody. And yet his own bloodline comes from the very same peoples. Adulterers, mingled seed, mixed race. That's another thing that the Messiah was to do. So we go back against false swears, against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless that turn aside the stranger from his right. And fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. You turn the stranger from his right. Do you realize that is like talking about the Gentiles? Their right to inherit eternal life. Because of the coming of the Messiah. For I the Lord change not, O you sons of Jacob, are not consumed. From the days of your fathers you have turned aside from mine ordinances and have not kept them. If you want to keep the ordinances of the Father, you will have to recognize that he has already sent the Messiah. The evidence is laying there before you. When you read what Elisha did, and you read that story very carefully, and then examine that with what happened in the life of Jesus Christ on this earth here, and what he did, and what every detail to that, down to Gehazi and Judas Iscariot, and selling out, lying to the prophet of God, betraying him, as Gehazi betrayed Elisha, so Judas betrayed Jesus, as Jesus healed the sick, Elisha healed the sick of Syria, even though they had been in combat against one another and had taken captive an Israelite girl. But what brought peace between the two kingdoms? It was the fact that there was a God in Israel. There was a prophet there that could still heal the sick. And it caused a calm between the two. And until you recognize who the prophet is, who the Messiah is, there will be no peace in Israel. The choice is up to you. I hope you'll make the right one. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Good afternoon.